And with us here at the Savannah is the designer of the band, Chris Santos. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Sonia. First of all, war dance depicts an actual event in the history of the American Indian tribe. In 1876, there was the largest gathering of the Indian tribes, which took place in Montana, in opposition to the hampering and persecution of the U.S. cavalry of the Indian tribes in those days. The result of this was the famous fierce and bloody battle against General Custer by Chief Sitting Bull and Chief Crazy Horse. This battle is known as Custer's Last Stand. Now, Indians um, initiated war dances before battle and before almost all of the events in their lives, and they use this as a form of prayer to their spirits. Almost all of their needs, requests, and things of daily life were included in dances to the spirits. And in 1876, the many tribes that gathered in Montana were those specifically of the Sioux, Cheyenne, Apache, and Mohican, the major ones. The first section we have on stage here in red and orange, as you can see, are the Apache tribes. The Apache tribes lived in the southwestern states of Texas, Colorado, New Mexico, and Oklahoma. They lived on wild plants, small game, and so we use the tomahawk, which they use for both for food purposes and warring purposes. The Apaches later became quite a fierce and warring tribe, and they for many raiding parties on the Spanish um, people who lived in the area and the U.S. cavalry. They, of course, became very popular in Hollywood movies, so we know the, the name Apache quite well. The main chiefs that we know from this tribe of the Apaches were Cochise, his son Taza, and Geronimo. And today there are just about 8,000 of the Apache Indians remaining who live on reservations in the state of Oklahoma and Texas. This section you're seeing now is the Bustle Dancer in shades of lime green, pink, purple. The Bustle was a, a famous part of the Indian decorative motifs and it was carried to high ornate decoration by the Catawba and the Sioux and Oklahoma tr Indian tribes. Of course, the bustle was used by the Indians as a most effective use of ceremonial extravagance. The feathers that they used originally, when the early days of the Indians, were from the birds of the prairies, mainly the eagle, wild turkeys, and other small birds. Later, with the influence of the Europeans, um, feathers became more elaborate, they became dyed, and more colorful and ornate presentations of the bustle were used. Here we see bustles on, on the back of the players and on the sides of their legs, on their arms and on the standards which they carry. You can see the amount of ornate work that is done and of course the Indians really carry this to very, very great extremes, particularly for their, their grand ceremonial occasions. Coming to you now, the shield dance. The shield dance was, uh, became a very notable um, thing of the Blackfoot Indian, which is a very powerful group of three warring tribes who were situated around the states of Montana and Alberta and Canada. Blackfoot Indian motifs were distinguished by very um, geometric designs incorporating um, triangle circles using the motif of the, the buffalo horns and patterns from nature. There you see some of the shields used by the Blackfoot Indians in this section called the shield land. I did a lot of research on this band. As a matter of fact, I became more and more interested as I got more and more books on the Indian tribes. And it was quite amazing to find out the uh, use of decoration that Indian tribes use. Um, 
feathers were used for specific, specific reasons, whether feather was used in the hair or on a bustle or on the left foot or on the right arm, it all meant something. And each feather was, was put there for a specific reason, whether it was for um, deeds of bravery or deeds of, of collecting food for the tribes, whether it had to do with marriage, birth. So it was most interesting to come across all of these different aspects of the Indian tribes. Uh, 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 it's no wonder that you have Indian bands that keep coming to the savannah every year because once you get involved in, in the research on, on these Indian tribes, you really become more and more interested. Yes, and there's quite a predominance of Indian bands this year. I, I mean, more so than many other years. Yeah, I think that, that um, some of the band leaders, like ours, like Raul Gary, felt that this was going to be a recession year. And Indian mass is known to be something that's light, comfortable, easy to carry, brilliant, and have a kind of mass that Trinidadians have always liked to play. So to speak, fulfilling all the criteria of what carnival is all about. Color, lightness, fun, right. total enjoyment. Total enjoyment. Of course, Chris, your combination, yourself and Raul, that is, you have won the Band of the Year title a couple of times, haven't We've you? won the Band of the Year three times. It's in 82, 84, and 85. Yes, I, I remember, I think it was your uh, 85 presentation, um, the name of which slips me at the moment. Marketplace. Okay. That's right. Marketplace, yeah, 84. Very, very much so. All right, well, I think next year we're going back to a local theme. And you'll be seeing a lot of basket, local basket work and so for 1990. <laughs> Chris, Lil Hart was with us just recently, and she said that orange was a very difficult color, that Trinidadians didn't like to wear orange. Do you find that your masqueraders have a preference for colors, or can you just do your thing, design, and they come across and buy it? But I, I have a preference for orange, as a matter of fact. It's a color that I find brings the, the Savannah stage alive. And I, I as I'm partial to oranges and reds, I also am the reverse to brown. Yeah, because your first section that went by the orange and red, it really, really looked good. Yes. Fiery. Now here we have the blanket dance on the monitor. The blanket, of course, is a very popular item of craftsmanship. It was used in powwows and, and big gatherings by dancers. And later, it, they were traded as items again when you got the influx of Europeans coming in and to the Indian areas. They were also used quite highly uh, to decorate teepees as ornamental decoration. The style here of the blanket dance is more that of the Southwest Mexican Indian variety, particularly that of the Navajo tribe. They're also very popular among Canadian tribes around the Hudson Bay area. Now the styles and ornamentation on the blankets of Indians vary greatly from tribe to tribe. Some, like the, more Can the Canadian groups use more stripes. The Southwest Indians use more colors and um, geometric motifs. Leading the next section, the Sioux Warriors, is Anthony Paul in this large blue, silver, black costume. Now, Anthony comes from New York to play with us every year. He's one of the influx of, of foreigners that come and play with Garrett. And this is why you were worried about the rain, huh? Look at those feathers. Aren't right. they beautiful? What are you seeing here, Chris? You're seeing the blanket dance again, which is just passed before us. They're now moving to the western end of the stage. You can see the motif and the blanket design actually is used on the cape of the players. So you get this sort of large triangular blanket that they carry on their back. It's nice to see pastel shades as well, huh? Yeah, they are. You don't have to go fiery and vibrant just because it's an Indian mask. Well, not, not all the time, but the fiery sections are coming on. Here you see in blue and white the Sioux scalpels. This, as I said, was led by Anthony Paul and the Sioux tribe was of the area of the plains of the Dakotas, moving from region to region as they waged war on many tribes that lived amongst them. They, it was the main tribe of the Sioux that formed the, the main part of the warring party against Custer in that 1876 battle, which is the, the main core of what we're playing here today, war dance. The chiefs among the two warriors who were more famous were Sitting Bull, Crazy Horse, and Chief Red Cloud. 
Now today, the Sioux proudly continue celebrating their heritage through powwows and festivals held in the summer around the state of South Dakota. Definitely the most popular tribe of Indians because we care about the Mirror work, which is very traditional in Canada Carnival. But on the bar, it says two scalpers. Yeah, two scalpers, because the two are going to have a warring um, tribe. Later on in, in the 1870s, uh, and later in the 1870s, they, they became a very warring tribe. Tomahawk. Right, and so they carry their tomahawk, their gun, and quite a bit of ornate. That I will see. Colors are brilliant, they're boys and white with and also a lot of adornment of mirror. The blue pieces my eyes. Blue is always blue is always a lovely color for Canada. One of my favorites, so boys. Of you have to do a lot of research to be authentic. You have to do a lot of research. I did more research on this band, I think, than any other band in the history of my designing really career. <laughs> um, it was to be a very simple band, too, but I think um, Brendan Rowdary found out that it became very difficult. Um, they and you got carried away. Yes, I did. <laughs> and there's a lot of jewelry pieces, a lot of neck necklaces with teeth and, you know, feathered earrings, feathered um, girdles. You know, and became a lot of small, small adornments to get done inside. And I'm seeing the mirrors in evidence now, right. as if my traders come closer to us. That's right. And uh, behind them, you can see the warriors coming into view. Colors of lime green, orange, white. And they have those sticks in their hand, which is known in the Indian, on Indian um, lingo as the two sticks. Now the cool stick, always we'll be seeing the two again here with the mirrors. Now back to the cool stick, and um, the cool stick was a very important thing carried by Indians because they, they carried them very proudly into battle. And it became a special honor to the Indian brave who could touch an enemy with either his hand or his decorated cool stick. And we also see these carrying spears. Bows and arrows, you can see the, what's called the quiver on the back of the, of the players with their groups of arrows stuck into the quiver. Of course, you know the bow and arrow was the probably weapon. more famous weapon of the Indian tribe. But for hunting as well, huh? For hunting, yes. Yeah. Well, it's already for hunting. Originally, they were used specifically for hunting. And then, of course, with the warring that took place both among the Indian tribes and with the invaders of our white men, we could call them. You realize, of course, after your talk yesterday, I'm now an expert on Indian. Yeah, well, I'm glad. I'm glad I'm influenced in your I'm giving learning. this <laughs> Next thing I'll do is bring out a band. <laughs> that would be nice, actually. <laughs> Imagine you might be describing your band. My own it? costume, oh yes, <laughs> believe it. This aspect of carnival is really best. Sitting here and seeing this presentation come alive on the 16th. It is out okay. there. I've been in Savannah looking at, at the first few bands go across from Brazil and then at my car. And it, it's a wonderful experience. I think I'd like to do this more on yes, Carnival Tuesday. It's a feeling that it's, you cannot describe in words to anybody. That's right. I, you know, I very seldom see other bands coming through the Savannah. This year I saw the first two and I was most impressed with the standard this year. We talk about recession. It doesn't seem as if no, recession. No. Either recession has hit Trinidad too badly as yet or people just because this is it. Carnival is our life. We've got to play it. Oh, this it's is our, our last hurrah. Yeah, it's our, our release of tension and we're going to do it no matter if we have to sacrifice other things. But $300 or whatever is not a big sacrifice. Not a big sacrifice. It's because you, you know Carnival is coming, you can save towards it. That's it. And if you work your business properly and you put down in your mass camp, you know, so much per month, then it becomes easier for you to do it. When time comes here, you have your money put aside. On the... Monitor now we see the buckskin braid and the basic color of the buckskin brown with very ornate motifs of, of orange, blue, green, all colors. Now the men in the tribe of course were the hunters and the women were the ones who had the car securing and carrying the hide. The deer, elk and antelope provided the finest buckskin clothes. 
beautiful and spectacular ever created in the Indian tribe. The eagle, of course, is regarded as the noblest and bravest bird, and its feathers were treated with great pride. They were dyed in various colors and used in bands along the arms in imitation of the gliding movements of the eagle in flight. What now, an elaborate headpiece, sir, huh? just for a regular masquerader. That's right. Now here you see the buckskin braids again, with the tan height. Behind them, the yellow, orange of the eagle dancers. The color combinations there, as we see all the sections. Yes, and really I, I, impressive. Tried, I tried to place um, each section so that one color complements uh, the other. And we don't sort of try to jumble too much of one color, you know, one after the other. So I, I, I go into the van house a few days before carnival when most of the costumes have been completed. And decide and, the order and of appearance. And decide the order then, yeah. Oh, that's another point worth mentioning. I wonder how you did that. Yes, it is very important actually in your presentation to get a nice clash of color and, you know, one that complements and not destroys or overpowers the other. So when you're actually designing a section, you don't say, well, I need a yellow section, a blue section, and a tan section. That's yes. correct, yes. Actually, what I have to do is uh, I do sort of uh, drawings on sort of not scrap, but sort of very loose drawings and, and work in color combinations. Now, the Mohican Indians here, this is led by Anne Rawlins, that red bustle, red and white bustle. And Anne comes to us from Galveston every year to play mass. She used to live in Mexico. She now lives in Galveston. And the Mohicans, uh, they carry their um, shakshaks, they, they, they The, the med medicinal rattle that they carry in their hand because the Mohicans were known for the, this aspect of their decoration. Their decoration was more sophisticated. Here we go to the Mohicans again. You can see both the tomahawk and the rattles in their hands. Specifically, they, they are in two groups, one in white with red adornments and the other in white with green adornments. Those triangular motifs that you see, that's the Mohican club. Back to the eagle dancers with their winged um, eagle feathers. I heard a lot about the medicine men. Oh yes, the medicinal um, dancers were um, very important in, in the rituals of the Indian and the medicine men actually played a very important role in the, in the life of the Indian tribes. Uh, of course, in those days, they didn't have um, the medicinal drugs and so that we have today. And they relied on brews of herbs, uh, different things that they found on the prairies for to heal the sick and the wounded. And the medicine men also, of course, relied on sacrifice and prayers to the spirits, which were done as a form of dance. Tell me, Chris, about your music. What have you got playing for you this year? Well, this year we have Chandelier um, as our brass band, and we have two DJs, DJ Crazy and DJ Cone. So we have three music trucks on the road. And how much uh, are your numbers this year? This year, I think we reached about 1,600. There you can see that lovely red and white bustle leading the Mohican section. There again, you can see the medicine rattles that they're carrying and shaking. And of course, it's wonderful that we have sunshine today so that our feathered um, braves didn't get soaking wet. <laughs> Coming into view now are the moon dancers in the shades of blue, orange, silver. Now this, the moon dance is done in celebration of the cycles of the moon, which Indian put great importance on, on these different cycles, both of the moon and the sun. This, 
This section takes on the colors of night lit by the silver gold moonlight. On many occasions, the night before a great buffalo hunt or a great um, battle or raid on some warring tribe or foe, the moon dance would be held in prayer for a successful day, whether it be the hunt or battle. You can see the silver moon motifs on the girdles and chess pieces that the players have, and they carry the, the typical Indian headpiece going from front to back. This headpiece is called a roach by the Indian tribes. It's this sort of um, Mohican type headpiece that runs along the scalp from front to back. What material do you use there, Chris? For that, what material did you use? For the top there, that is couscous grass. Dirty bear grass along the, the top sprayed in different colors, in blues, different shades of blue. Mm -hmm. Effective. Looks like drinking straws. Right. Well, <laughs> the, the, the actual roach used by the Indian tribes were made from porcupine quills. Well, of course, we can't get porcupine quills here, so we improvise and use couscous grass. One of our local materials that, of course, are, are popular with creating certain effects. You got a nice combination of color on your monitor, the red and white followed by the blue and then the brilliant orange at the background. That's from our camera on the bridge so we can get an overview of what's happening. And then we come closer now it as was, the sections come on. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing that that bridge was built actually. It gives the viewer a lovely um, kaleidoscope, you know, and a panoramic view of what's going on. You see the standard or the traditional Indian motif, the spear followed by the, the moon of the moon dancers. Back to the Mohican medicine men and women. Well, you've entirely changed my concept of an Indian mask. No longer will I think of three feathers and a tomahawk. <laughs> there we have June Gardner. She plays and leads the sun section. June again comes from New York. She played our queen last year, if you remember, Bacchanal Woman. This is and colossal. This is a, a nice, rich costume, worked in brilliant orange and white and silver. June is a great mask player. She loves to come to Trinidad every year. She brings ice and her design. She sends down her materials, and we work on her costume. There's a marriage yes. of the masquerade and the designer. Right. Uh, her costume was made by myself and Gregory Medina, uh, the help from Warren James. The orange looks good. Yes. It's a nice costume. It's one of my favorite in the band. It was started off as a little simple idea, and um, it turned into a rather elaborate, it is rich elaborate. looking costume. And it's big. Is it heavy though? No, is it's she not, carrying it's not. it? And she, you bet she's going to carry that all day today. She didn't come out yesterday because of the rain with it. She actually, she had it That's in the road. Shame, huh? She had it in the road, and I advised her in case it got wet. And couldn't look good today. That did you eventually get wet? No, we did not. <laughs> we did not. <laughs> That's why these feathers look fluffy today. No, as soon as you left, the rain came, and I thought, well, Chris has brought the rain. No, well, I left now, I say. Then you see the moon dances again, you can see flashes of the silver moon. The roach had pieces made from vegetable grass. Input of our local materials into the American Indian design. And I think Pixie, you can pick up the amount of feather work that was done yes, a by lot the garage on the arm pieces. Here you have the sun dancers in a brilliant orange and gold. Now the sun dance again was an important event in the spring ritual of the Cheyenne Indian. This ritual became most associated with this spectacular self-torture practiced by many tribes in which young warriors were who were eager to horrible. prove their courage and manhood. They actually cut slits in their skin in certain skewers and they hung, were hung by cords in the dazzling sunlight. I think if you remember a movie called Horse with yes. Richard Harris, um, that is part of the Sundance ritual, would you believe? This I came across in the book, I never realized that. And of course you have here the brilliant sun colors, orange with the gold sunbursts on the arms, on the headpiece, even on their legs, and a very richly worked section. This 
section is a little more subdued than the others. Maybe it's the common effect of the blue or what. It's pleasing to the eye, but not as vibrant as, not as, and as fiery as well, the others. Yeah, and well, of course, they portray the moon, so which is not the most brilliant Nighttime. color, you know, at night. So. The romance of moonlight. Yep. <laughs> Romancing the Trinidad Mars player. And on stage at the moment is Raul Garib's War Dance. And sitting here with us is Chris Santos being interviewed by Pixie Vision Now this section that you're seeing is actually called War Dance. This epitomizes the meeting of the tribes of the state of Montana in 1876 when this war against General Custer took place. And this section is a whole melee of the war theme using the, the shield, the spears, yes. which of course the, were the main in, implements of war. Here you see again the brilliant orange of the sun dance, and behind them the colorful feathers of the war dancers. What about rain dancers? I didn't do rain dancers. Um, we ha I was limited to the amount of sections, and I chose, you know, what I thought would be I could introduce the most colors. Not that color. we needed them. Mm. No, the, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think we would have needed them this yesterday, this particularly. Again, here's the war dancers with their shields, their spears. You can see the nice, colorful shield there. Now these motifs were. were researched and, and what I use on the shield are actual motifs of the Indian tribes. That little um, figure that you see there represented the snake as a motif using the snake. The circle with the dot in the center represented the, the hope of a successful battle. Do your masqueraders ever ask for an explanation like you're giving now? Oh, no, no, no. No, they're no. not at all interested. Not, really, not that I know of. You know, I've never had because it's nice to know. It really is nice to know. Mm -hmm. But I never had a mask. I ever come up to me and say, well, why are we in this color? <laughs> why, are we, why am I wearing this girdle? Or why just, am I wearing I this headpiece? Do they, they choose the colors to go with the hairstyles and the hair color? You know, what suits them best? That's you know? right, what suits them. What they figure they're going to look nice to them. But I understand because of the inclement weather yesterday that we had a very young viewing audience. And the descriptions you gave really got through to them. It was simple, it was basic, and they identify with the Indian. So I think it was marvelous having you here yesterday to tell the kids what's going on. Well, I'm glad for that because um, Indian mask, not that they, I think it will ever die in Trinidad Carnival, but I would like, you know, to get the information to young people, particularly when they play, you know, their school bands and so on the road. Now you're seeing here the coming interview, the powwow. Now the power was held by the Indian tribes as a ceremony um, initiating happiness and they danced around the maypole, I mean the totem pole, held in the, the central area of the tribe reservation. Now, I always thought a powwow was like a war. They were having a powwow about a conflict in the tribes. Now you tell us it's a celebration. No, a powwow could be used for a celebration for a, a, as a form of request to the spirits before a battle. But it was a powwow generally is a, is a grouping for a reason, a, a celebration or a request to the spirit. Here you see on the stand that the face is taken from a, a motif on a totem pole and the, the face is used again on the hand piece on the front. Once again you get the Indian roach head piece with the dirty bay grass and feathers. and tassels hanging in different colors, forming again the, the different motifs used on the totem pole design. I'm seeing faces on those standards, yes? That's right, that's a, one of the faces that I took from a totem pole motif on one of the research books that I had. Is that like a god? Is it a god? Um, what on the they, totem pole, yes? What yeah? they did when they carved the totem poles, they used what they thought a god or you know a spirit might might represent and you've got various um, types of faces on and different tribes and this i now think this is, is your final this section this is the final section the feather dance 
Now, of course, this feather is uh, used as a chief ceremonial decorative, as it were. The tribes adorn themselves with gold trinkets, feathers, bustles, and strippings when the feather dance was to take place. This probably was the most ornate form of dance that the Indian tribes would carry on. Here you see very large bustles with basic colors, black with orange and gold. And as I said, during a feather dance, the Indians really dressed up. They used all forms of embellishment, mirrors, um, tassels, hand jewelry, pipes. And this became very influenced later on by the Europeans, all these tassels and feathers. And the Indians became very interested, as we know, by mirrors. And that motif that they carry in their hand is representing actually a, a European mirror that would have been traded by the Indians with the Europeans. They seem to have the most mirrors in the entire band. That's right, because with the feather dance, they really, they came to talk, dressed up as we would call it. You know, they, they really embellish themselves to enjoy this chief ceremonial ritual, the feather dance. Hey. Hey. That's the final section. You'll just see sort of the committee members jumping up behind, which I am going to join in so I can enjoy this. Well, Chris, thank you very much for coming. It's a pleasure having you here year after year. I mean, the description is the history of the Indians, and it's a fantastic presentation. A good mass, fun mass. So let's hope it doesn't rain. Are you going to be the other three venues? Sorry? Yes, three yes venues. we are going to the other venues. Yeah. Right. Well, good luck and thank congratulations. You. Thank you so much. Say hi to Raul and Brenda. We'll do and see you next year. <laughs> okay. Thank you.